to be running around in the snow. Maybe he needs a fresh summer cut. He, I, I proposed that. And apparently you can't, like, it's something about the coating, the underbelly. You, you screw up with the overall dynamics of the coat. Can't shave, wow. unfortunately. Yeah, I tried that. So he just sits inside in front of a fan and then an overhead fan and then the AC blowing on him. So it's like 65. He's happy. I'm happy. Are you happy? I'm happy. Summer's here. July 4th is gone. Trade deadline coming. Another episode of Big Ben and K-Win on NoFilter.net, Caffeine TV, and YouTube. If you're more of an audio podcast, don't worry. We've got you covered. Download, listen, and subscribe. Today, we're talking about Major League Baseball, the Major League Baseball trading deadline, my Padres, Ben's Mariners, and this lull of sports we have until the Olympics start and the WNBA Finals. So we might talk a little fast food. I'm K-Win. He's Big Ben, and he... Those little worried about his Seattle Mariners. Mm, last night was a bounce back game for the Mariners against your Padres. It's nice to get out of Safeco sometimes where if you aren't hitting, you got to pitch well. If you aren't pitching well, you're probably losing the game. Uh, Safeco, where home runs go to die. The T Mobile, exactly. Like warning track shots. That ball is belted. You know, Do all people the way still back. call it Safeco? No, it's it's still T Mobile. Maybe Safeco to the old, old guard. The OG that, fans. OG fans. That's that's where the realm was. Um, Logan Gilbert, an all-star. I, I need to shout out Logan Gilbert. Tied for the league lead in uh, quality starts. Second in, what are we talking? What's the key metric? Whip. Whip. Or? Thank you. Yes. 0.9 whip. Second in the league. He has a 6-5 and five record to show for it. I mean, the only only the baseball purists can look at that and go, he's getting screwed. Everyone else is like, ah, he's a mediocre pitcher. That's not the case. He's an all-star this year, but it exemplifies or personifies what the Mariners are. They are leading the division yet have one all-star. Hey, who's a pitcher? The Phillies have three players <laughs> on the all-star team in the infield. Yeah. Ridiculous to me. But uh, we're going to talk what? Your top five? Top my five. I'm going to shout down the Mariners' offense because Gilbert and Luis Castillo should have at least 10 or 11 wins, but they don't get enough protection. So let's start this off. Who has a better or worse offense, the San Francisco Giants or the Seattle Mariners? Uh, depends on which way the wind is blowing. Is that is that accurate? I mean, both ballparks – you know, are near a body of water, effectively, right? Um, that impacts your your home run. I would I would love to see a stat to be candid. Here's here's what's going to answer my question. I would love to see a stat in which we take away the environment. So, T-Mobile, if these guys are hitting, say, at Petco Park, what does seriously? What does the offense look like? Yeah, Cincinnati. Where, yeah, the environment's affecting the game. The, the Mariners just. I mean, they ran out like 67 different lineups throughout the course of the season already. They have no clue who's going to deliver on any given one night. Cal Raleigh's probably the most consistent bat in terms of RBIs and, and threat to hit a home run on that team. And he's your catcher. Yeah. We have in previous seasons DH'd a catcher. You should not be doing that. You should not. The Mariners just can't figure it out. And I don't know, Mitch Garber, they continue to roll him out. He's hitting in a buck seventy. That's lower than Richie Sexton when he, Richie Sexton was just getting razzed throughout the city. Are there beer him. deals for his Mitch, batting average? Mitch Garver's too low. <laughs> the bar would go under. To answer your question, I don't know. You follow the, the the Giants closer than I do. I just know the Mariners have phenomenal pitching. Kirby Castillo, uh, Emerson Hancock's not a bad guy. He'd be a third, or, second, or third arm in most rotations. So it's disappointing to see a guy roll out and pitch really, really well, well enough to win nearly every game, nearly every time out there. They have, Mariners are the best pitching staff in baseball, but they have probably one of the worst offenses in baseball. A lot has to do with the park, both San Francisco and Seattle. It's They're close to the bay. They have the fog. They have the marine layer. And when that ball gets up in the air, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, I think it's pretty close. Like. 
Seattle's going to go as far as J Rod goes. San Francisco now is going to go as far as Elliot Ramos goes. Like those are the horse, the alpha, the guy you can't let them beat you if you're the opposing pitchers. Beyond that, it's a supporting cast of 230 and 240 hitters <laughs> that may get to double digit home runs, may not. So they've got to both win with pitching and defense. I'm a Bay Area guy, so I'll give a slight edge to the Giants because they do have Solaire, who had 46 home runs with the Royals, 30 last year with the Marlins. He's hit in the 15 to 20 range. You got Conforno, you got Chapman. The Mariners, it's pretty empty. And that's why I think they got to go out and get a bat. No one scares you on that team. Seriously, you look up and down like the lineup. No one scares you on the Mariners. There's no one. You're not pitching around anyone. You're pitching at Julio. You're able to. You, and that's the the part. Julio can't be a weapon if there's no one to protect him. Yeah. Like they're not scared of the guy. Sitting Especially there. in the playoffs, they'll just neutralize him. Exactly. Now they know that the Mariners aren't going to score enough runs to beat them. Exactly. So you you hit you hit it on the head. Like people. We go as Julio goes, and if you don't let Julio go, we're not going to go. Like That's how it, what it comes down to. If you neutralize Julio, the Mariners don't go. The offense doesn't go, and we do need a bat. There's been talks of Vlad Guerrero Jr. The Ooh, Blue Jays like came in one. came in and got two out of three from the Mariners. Like they're... The Mariners may be the eighth team in since 1969 to blow a 10 game lead and it happened in nearly a month it happened quick the astros got hot i thought the astros had gone out to die they release what's his name the big guy abreu bregman's having off year el tuvi started a little slow kyle tucker got hurt but all of a sudden here come those astros and you know the mariners are looking over their shoulders too the mariners just don't know what to do with the lead they're, they're playing not to lose rather than to win, right? And sometimes, and that just doesn't work. There's a reason they haven't won a World Series. They don't have guys that have been there before that can go into the clubhouse and say, guys, listen, quit looking at the scoreboard. Quit worrying about plus minus. Go out and do your job. You know, play every game as if it matters because it does. And so let's support this this pitching staff. If I'm the pitching staff, I'm giving that speech to all the everyone playing on the field. Seriously, guys, listen. I'm giving up two to three runs. This is your job. Clutch up. They put 15 runners in score or on base against the Blue Jays this past Sunday in a game that I was personally at. You know how many came across? Two. Two. Wow. Two K win. So to win in Seattle, it's tough. Because it's not – Seattle's a great city. I love it. People love it to go. But as far as a baseball offensive player, it's not on the top of their list. Because if you look at this year, this Asian baseball, it's all about launch angle, home runs, war. And you can't get that in Seattle. So for them to win, it's got to be pitching and defense and their farm system. And this is the year. I think they got to get rid of one of their pitchers. I'm not talking about any of their frontline pitchers, but they might have to give up a Emerson Hancock or a Bryce Miller to get a bat. You mentioned uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. That would be huge. I don't think Toronto will give him away. But maybe they could get a Pete Alonzo or a J.D. Martinez. But this is the year they've got to do something because as it's looking right now, they're going to limp into the playoffs and they're going to lose in the first round because they don't have enough offense. We've seen this story before. I agree with you. Up and down the lineup, they're running out guys like your hopes and prayers, right? These aren't – Dylan Moore's not an everyday player, but yet he's in the lineup every day, it seems like. He's just not. Victor Robles, who they picked up off waivers from Washington. Amazing prospect back in the day, but he's just – he's not something a playoff team – you look up at that, you got to go, are the – are these guys playoff tested? Are they clutch? Have they been there before? You look up and down that lineup, it's no, 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 no. Kyle Raleigh is the only guy. Yeah. Kyle Raleigh is the only guy I have any confidence in. All right, let's quit belaboring the Mariners' woes and the absolute pessimism around the entire organization. Let's hear your top five teams in the MLB right now. My top five teams in Major League Baseball. We are... I think a little more than halfway. The All-Star Game's coming up next week. 
So we, we know who we are. So my top five, don't at me, because there's going to be teams that aren't in there that are on Buster Only's top five. But this is K-Win's top five. And I'm looking today moving forward. I'm projecting out as well. So I'm going to start at number five. We've got my San Diego Padres, the second best team in the NL West. One of the best teams in the NFL, Machado, Tatis. They traded for a rise for Miami. Some say he's got a swing like Tony Gwynn. But it's been Jerickson Profar, a top five productive bat in the NL, first time All-Star, and Jackson Merrill, a young rookie center fielder. They have helped the Padres. They are in the top five. They're a pitcher away from making some serious damage in the playoffs. Number four, that's right. I'm going with the second place NL Central St. Louis Cardinals. Go back and look at the stats since May 12th. They are the third best team in baseball. They got Sonny Gray. They got Lance Lynn. They got those old Grizzly bets. Goldschmidt, Arenado. They'll start hitting the second half. Don't worry. But they got my cousin. Not really, but he's got the same last name. Mason Wynn, shortstop. Productive out. Number three, I'm going the Dodgers. A lot of injuries. Muncie's out. Betts is out. Everyone on their pitching staff is pretty much out. But they got Otani, Freeman, and Will Smith. Number two, the Orioles, Gunnar Henderson. I looked at their offense. The Orioles lead the league in average, home run, slugging. I think they're fifth in um, RBIs. They got pitching, too. And number one, I got to go Philadelphia right now. Bryce Harper is the... It got to be in the lead for NL MVP. You got Alec Baum, who's got more RBIs than Harper. Trey Turner. They got Castellana. They got Schwarber. They got Zach Wheeler. They got Suarez. They got Aaron Nola. I think it's World Series or bust for the Phillies and the Dodgers because the time is now. And that is my top five. What do you think about it? I can agree with you for the most part. I think you have some National League allegiance in the fact that <laughs> – the San Francisco Giants play in that league, and you get to see more of those teams play. That's that's my bit, bias. That's a, yeah, that's a bit obvious in your in your top five. <laughs> um, I think the te- teams that aren't being talked about right now, and that's maybe because they've underperformed a little bit in the way of expectations, are the Atlanta Braves, and maybe in some sense the New York Yankees. But those both those teams again are tested. Um, a team that's sneaky that I hate to say, but they're playing and they're here's the thing about the Mariners and the Astros. They are both in the, they're, they're in the worst division in baseball in terms of you've got the angels. I was going to say it. I was glad you said it. Yeah. It, it's, it's obvious that if you're the Astros and hopefully the Mariners, you're going to be able to feast when it comes down to the last two months of the season and you're playing the Rangers angels and athletics more regularly. And the Astros scare me just in the fact that they're tested. They've been the postseason the last probably decade straight, whatever, however long Mattress Max and Matt, Matt is, is it Mattress Max? Sounds about right. Is that Mattress right? Max. The Mattress guy that puts a million bucks now on the Astros every time to win the World Series. Oh. Anyway, they're going to feast. The Astros are going to feast. They're good. Um, they have the bats, even without a Brayu. But I do like. Your Orioles pick, they feel like the Astros of old. Ooh, they do. Where they've built through, like they've hit on all their draft picks. Rashman is uh, a great uh, catcher. Gunner has got all the swagger of Bobby Witt and maybe a little more, right? Those guys, I, I look at Gunner and Bobby Witt as like, these guys are mainstays. Mm-hmm. With organizations, you think of like Cal Ripken and then you think of George Brett. Like, both these guys are going to stay with that. Or they're not going to let them leave. They can't. No. So the Orioles are going to be good for some time. And it's interesting how they – I think they've they've put a little bit wor- of worry in the Yankees. Oh, yeah. Well, the Yankees are going. Cashman's going, I bought a team. But yet you can't beat a team that the Orioles have developed, right? There's two different organizational styles from the, from the Orioles and the Yankees. I do not agree with your Cardinals pick. Ooh. I think I th- I think the That's twins. Fair. I think the twins. Watching the twins play, they're a better team. Honestly, different division, but I think they're a better team, top to bottom. I think Correa is a. I mean, for everything that the Astros let him go, Correa has been great for the Twins. Um, 
And then, yeah, I just – some say the Red Sox are rebounding, but the Braves are like this sneaky team that no one's talking about. Yeah. Like all these teams are – we've seen some of these teams emerge like you talked about. Uh, Padres, I don't know if they have the pitch and they get there. It's like if you took the, the Mariners rotation and the Padres lineup, World Series. It's over, yeah. I, I I like your assessment. The Yankees, what scares me is is they have the best one-two punch – offensively with Soto and judge. But beyond that, the only thing consistent about Stanton is he strikes out and he's hurt like Volpe's second year, but they're really not getting anything from anyone else in their lineup. Rizzo struggling for Dugo struggling. I just think the Red Sox are going to catch the Yankees. I may be past the Yankees. The Red Sox are playing with house money. They've got these rookies, They've got a bunch of injuries in the first half. They're coming back. The Red Sox almost made my top five. Raphael Devers is a stud. He's a beast. Mm-hmm. They've got a guy in center. I don't know his name. First time All-Star. Um, the Red Sox are really good. Yeah, and the other team you didn't mention is the Guardians. Yeah. Um, and Jose Ramirez is a stud. Uh, that's a tough division, a tough out, the, the AL Central. The Royals got – there's a reason I'm wearing their hat. And that's seriously. I look at Salvador Perez. The guy's thirty four, and he's just—he's an all star, right? He—I don't know if he made it this year, but uh, I will say this about Salvador Perez: he's been around that organization since he started. He's thirty four, so that's roughly twelve years. He doesn't have Piazza numbers, but he's still consistently your twenty ninety guy, twenty home runs, ninety RBIs, and Bobby Witt Jr. is—I mean, number three in the league in average. I think number one in hits now. And I, I think there's, again, he's a cornerstone moving forward. They can couple that with pitching, but they gonna, then again, that's a tough division. They got Cole Reagans, who I believe they acquired from the Rangers. He's a stud, a lefty, the front of that rotation. Baseball's exciting. It exciting is. Exciting time. I can't and, wait. And with the trade line, let's talk a little bit about the trade line because there's there used to be buyers and sellers. And there was, a, 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 you know, there was a definite line of where you stood. You were either one on one side or the other. Now with the expand, expanded playoff, you get teams that are like, oh, I'm, I'm only three games out, right? What do I do? And I'm horrible. Yes. I've got <laughs> no chance of winning. We're but, scuffling. But if we get on a hot run, we can make the wild card. And now you're sitting there and you're telling your fans. Your fans are looking at the, stat, or the standings and going, I'm only, you're only three games out. Let's go. But then the front office is saying, we got no shot. So we're either going to – and that's where the, the economy uh, lands is that you got probably your team that you got to get rid of salary cap, but your fans want to see those guys continue to play throughout the season. And if they aren't there, they're not going to show up. And so you got teams like the Mets, who you mentioned with Alonzo, like do we give up Pete? probably a good idea too but no one's going to come watch us in flushing new york if we do you know that's just the, the matter of fact so this year's trade di- deadline and i saw someone comment they go the mariners may be in a position where although they're in the division lead it might be best for them to sell and they're, they're right you know like you look at the offense and go we're, we're not an off like there's no way well, they've got to can- balance like how much merchandise and sales are they going to get from two maybe a two game series yeah <laughs> versus packing it in right get ready for the next year if they in service or yeah the poto came out and said hey you gotta be we're a 5400 team and that's going to get you to playoffs three three out of five years right yeah and people are tired of hearing that right i, I don't want to be a 5400 team i think that mariners are actually a 54 her a uh, fifty-four percent win percentage team right now, but that it doesn't feel right. Um, if you're a Mariners fan, you want to add bats, but again, to what you said, you're probably giving up an arm. Bryce Wu, um, is, it, is it? It's Bryce Wu or Emerson Hancock, probably maybe some Harry Ford type. They've got so much pitching that to get a bat, they're going to have to do it. Yeah, agreed. We'll I'm see. looking at the Toronto Blue Jays. They're 16 games out of the AL East. They're nine and a half out of the wild card. 
I think they should be sellers. Will they be? I don't know. <sighs> but you've got some interesting players they could deal. Vlad, I don't think he's going. Gossman, a pitcher. Everyone needs pitchers. But Bo Bichette. I'm here and out here, out in L.A. The Dodgers might go after Bo Bichette. Put him at short, move Mookie back to second, give them another all-star. It's win or bust for the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. That would definitely lengthen their lineup because right now at second base, it's Gavin Lutz, Enrique Hernandez, Craig Taylor, and the next inning because it's an easy out. So the Dodgers might do something big. In the infield, they definitely need to get a pitcher because all of their pitchers, Glasgow's now on the IL, are hurt. Kershaw, mm -hmm. Bueller, Yamamoto, Gavin Stone, and your boy James Paxson are leading the way. I think the Dodgers will do something aggressive for pitching and hitting because they have to. I mean, how many years have they won the NL West? And they only have one World Series. It's a bubble World Series. So we'll put an mm -hmm. asterisk by that, just like the Lakers bubble title. But the Dodgers, I think, will do something big. You're right. They will. They have to. If there's a hole in the ship, you gotta patch it. If you're the Dodger, I mean, you're 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 driving a billion dollar boat, and if it's gonna it looks like it might be sinking, you gotta patch it as quickly as possible. Um, I agree with you, but Chet, I, I actually watched watched the Blue Jays play this past weekend against the Mariners. Here's the thing with Blue Jays fans: there's a lot of them. Like they come in droves. The stadium was filled with more Blue Jays fans than Seattle fans. So, if so you're let me only, ask you this: so what Vancouver is just above Seattle are Vancouver fans, Blue Jays fans, which is on the yes, East. Absolutely. And not yeah, fans? I have nothing like I'm, I'm talking there. I was out in the center field bleachers and I look around and, and I hear people talking somewhere from Vancouver. Most are from the burbs, like out in Chilliwack, like wherever that is, right. They're coming down for the games. They're taking three days out. It's a vacation. There is, yeah, there's probably 20,000 Blue Jays fans in that stadium, wow. if not more. And so you as an organization, you have an entire country to appease. You want people coming to games, merchandise, every one of them had a jersey on. Yeah. Every one of them. So if you get rid of guys like Bachet, who isn't quite Vlad Guerrero to the organization, right? Vlad Guerrero is a, a legacy. But you start leaving, you know, Gossman and Bachet, letting them go, you know, you, you probably make, a, a lot more hockey fans or what, whatever else the Canadians tend to watch. It's, yeah. it's a paradox that you as an organization, uh, if you're the blue Jays ownership have to figure out real quick. Well, we talked about some of the teams in the top five that you do agree, the Orioles and the Phillies. I think they will make moves as well. The Orioles have a new ownership group. They got Rubenstein, they don't have the Antangelo, Santangelo. I don't know his name. Those owners that didn't pay anyone or make any trades. The Orioles don't have them. They need a frontline starter to go with Corbin Burns and Grayson Rodriguez. Look for Tyler Anderson on the Angels. The White Sox got a couple pitchers. I think the Orioles would make a move. But it is a move in the bullpen. The Orioles could go after Mason Miller to put him in the bullpen. Everyone needs an out. Everyone needs a lot of outs. I think the Orioles will make moves. Phillies. I'm only worried about a part of their outfield. They've got a platoon in center, I think. There's rumors they could go after Jazz Chisholm. But look out for Brett Rooker. The A's could Ooh. make someone into a World Series with Brett Rooker, left field slash DH, and Mason Miller. Those are yeah. the moves I want to see. Mason Miller throws, what, 105? Yeah. Nasty. Smoke. Yeah. Don't bring him to the thick air of T-Mobile. He'll be throwing 98. I agree with you. It, this trade deadline is going to be, it's always telling, but more so than any with the expanded playoff. And there's just, a, I mean, there's only about seven teams that just you're already standing on the side of selling if someone asks you. Yeah. And just a matter of what you're going to get in return. And I think that makes, like, if you're a seller, it's a buyer's market, right? Mm -hmm. Especially since the introduction of the wildcard playoff. It'll be interesting to see who, who makes splashes and who holds tight. Yankees got to do something too, right? Like there's rumors that maybe it's Cody Bellinger. Cubs are scuffling. Bellinger can play first. He can play outfield. The Yankees got to do something. Yeah. Talking about the Mariners, 
or I don't know who we're talking about, not developing talent. No, well, we're talking about the Yankees. Yeah, they just yeah. buy teams. They don't develop, they buy teams. Yep. The, the Yankees and Dodgers, and they have the, the ability to do so. And I mean, I, I also saw another metric. It had 10 teams. Uh, there's 10 teams that spend some exorbitant amount, 10 teams that spend middle middle amount of money in terms of where they stack. So they're top 10 teams, top middle teams, or middle 10 teams and lower 10 teams. Their winning percentage actually aligned. So, you know, one team, those top 10 were on average, uh, I think 56, no, 56% of the time they're winning games, 52. So there is a cor- cor- corollary. Correlation? Correlation. There's a correlation to how much you spend and how what the output is. So they probably got the method, um, but there is always anomalies when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yes. Now, do we get out of here or do you want to talk fast food? Let's talk fast food real quick. Okay. Real fast. Um, all right. So McDonald's, there's inflation going on. McDonald's just introduced a $5 meal. I had it yesterday. Yeah. What's um, in it? It's you, you get four nuggets, you get four uh, nuggets. Easy, just hold on. You get a, a double cheeseburger, you get some fries and a drink. Okay. Think about it, it for so you're paying a buck fifty for each of those. Like four nuggets, we get like five fries. No, you get a whole 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 little small fries. So I wanted to dis- discuss okay. top five fast food restaurants that you you're on a road trip. Yeah. Uh, three day road trip you're going to. I mean, In and Out's number one. So hopefully, I'm just driving along the West Coast. <laughs> Animal style, grilled cheese, secret menu, got to go In and Out. McDonald's has to be in there because their fries are so addicting. They are. Nuggets are pretty good. And do they still have McFlurries? They do. Yeah. So if McDonald's. The ice, if the ice cream machine, machine's not broken. <laughs> McDonald's <laughs> has to be in there. Um, I was actually talking about this uh, with uh, Drew's son, Caden. Does Chipotle count as fast food? Yeah. It's fast, there's, no, fresh. there's no drive food through. Fa- fast, fresh. No, you can get it. Bing, bing, bingo, bango, bongo, you're out. You're not sitting down. Okay. They're, they're not in my top five. So I got McDonald's, <laughs> in and out Oh, Jack in the Box. Ooh. Oh, you don't like Jack? I, I'm not a huge Jack guy. I'm a, a sourdough Jack's good every now and again, but nothing, nothing beyond that for me. Everything's open 24 hours. Those tacos, <laughs> two for a dollar, come in great late night. So I'll go Jack. Well, I got a lot of burgers. I'll throw in Taco Bell, a little okay. T-Bell. Number five. I mean, I got to go five guys. They've okay. got the second best fries in the game. Second best. McDonald's is the best. Two McDonald's. Okay. I'm going to give you some regional stuff. Number one for me is taco, taco time. Taco time. Amazing up here in the pack Northwest. Taco you time. Taking me to taco. I time? will take you to taco time next time you're up here. Burger master. Number two, another oh. regional. Yeah. You okay. sit in the car, they bring it out to you. Amazing. You can sit there and listen to some tunes. I feel cheated every time I come to the Pacific it, Northwest. It, you should. Cause the, my third is, um, Dick's. Dix is third. It's again a little too heavy on the burgers right now, but Dix is third. Um, number four for me would be there's this place called Pick Quick, another burger place, yeah. but exactly like In and Out. I'll take you to it, and you, I, I want you to try it next time you're up here in Seattle. Right. Pick Quick's number four for me. So I've done Mexican, I've done burgers. Um, let's Subway. See. <laughs> no. Uh, Let's see. I I will do Jersey Mike's. Ooh, okay. Jersey Mike's is a wonderful, good, fresh um, slice the meat right there in front of you. Mike's way is wonderful. That's like your go-to when you're you get two. They're big, so you can have two meals, right? Yeah. That would be mine. That would be mine, my friend. Dix is Dix should probably be propelled up. Maybe in second place. Okay. If we go regional, Southern California, you got to throw in Del Taco. And if you're Ooh. in the central, you got to go Sonic. Yep. Del Taco has uh, crinkle cut fries. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, you can get crinkle cut fries with combo it up with like a burrito. It's great. Oh, wow. 
Honorable mention, Carl's Jr. Double Western cheeseburger with that onion ring. Ooh. You've got wow. that? Oh, I mean, not in a while. I got to stay beach <laughs> re- I gotta stay beach ready now in my younger days. Come October, we'll have it every weekend. Yes. Yeah, All right, let's get out of here. Big Ben and K Win. Uh, find us wherever you're in your podcast at Big Ben K Win underscore. That's Spotify, iHeart, uh, iTunes podcast. And then we have, you can find us social media wise. You can find us on threads, TikTok, uh, X, as well as Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Live each week, no filter, caffeine go. TV and YouTube. I'm K Win. He's Big Ben and go Padres. Go Royals. Mariners. It's going to be a short <laughs> summer. <laughs> Boom. Boom.